Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Armin and today we're going to talk about Thunder Hill. Thunder Hill East that is. So bear with me. Um, so today we're trying out a new format. This is more like a classroom style and now already people are like, oh, I gotta sign off, don't want to do a classroom. Don't worry, um, this is just really to talk about a raceway, how to approach any racetrack, but also what to do at Thunder Hill East. I'm not saying I'm the fastest guy out there, I'm absolutely not. I just wanted to share um, how I get around Thunder Hill and how you can get uh, under two minute lap time uh, by doing that. So yeah, I just want to walk you through what I do when I go around Thunder Hill East. I hope this will be really helpful. Um, right now my lap times are 157, so under the two minute magical marker. And I just want to share uh, to everyone what I'm doing and please comment below what kind of feedback you have, what you're doing differently. So yeah, today I want to try something new. I just want to take you on a lap around Thunder Hill East and just walk you through every step that I'm doing. If you're new to track riding, uh, for track riding you always have a plan for every turn uh, in mind of that you want to execute with your bike and try to get the plan more and more refined every time you go. I will just share the plan that is playing in my mind when I do my laps. My lap times are currently 157. I have a couple of ideas to uh, get a couple of seconds shaved of that as well. But right now I will just walk you through the plan how I get my 157, 158 laps in right now. Please let me know in the comments below if this is useful, if you learned something from this and definitely give it a like and subscribe uh, if you want to uh, see more of this content. To make the classroom not too boring, just grab yourself a beer and we will make this a little bit more fun. So cheers! Okay, let's start talking about Thunder Hill East. To everyone uh, that is new to the track or also to people that have been a couple of times but need a refresher, Thunder Hill East is this upper part here. There's this Thunder Hill West, which is the lower part. And so we're not going to talk about any of the turns that have a W on it. Also, you can scan the QR code. I hope the resolution is high enough in this video that you can actually get this map. It's just a like Google for it, Thunder Hill Raceway map, and you will see this. So, when you start on a racetrack, before you really make a plan on what you're going uh, through for every turn, look at uh, the map of the track. And the biggest thing to look first at and how to get fast laps, ah, the first thing you want to... <laughs> I had to sneeze there. The first thing that I look for at a track is where are the straights. We have here the front straight and here's the back straight. Um, and then also you can see from six, seven, eight, uh, these turns don't have very, very tight turns. So it's a very, very high speed section. So for me, the main parts to go faster around Thunder Hill East is get maximum speed on the front straight. It's the longest straight on the track, carry a lot of speed through turn one into turn two. So this entire section, really, really important to get that right. Then you have a little bit S's with the cyclone up here where you go up and down a hill. This is pretty slow. You cannot save too much time there. Better. And then another really important section is the six, seven, eight. You can see very fast turns because the turns are not very tight. So you really want to make sure that these section of these uh, couple of turns are very uh, well connected and you can carry a lot of speed through it. And then you get all the way to nine. Here's another hill uh, and the turn is a little bit tighter than it looks like on this map. Um, so a little bit slower, especially because it's going uphill a little bit more challenging. And then you have almost a, a straight here with a kink as well. So again, main sections have the front straight carry a lot of speed to turn one and two. Then you have a slower part, then really important section is a six, seven, eight complex that slows down at nine. You have almost a straight, slow turns, and then you want to really get speed onto the back straight again. Then that connects you to the front straight. So that's roughly how I uh, look at Thunder Hill East as an overview. Now let's have a quick look at one of my laps. The link of the lap is in the description below. You can play it back at your leisure. And let me first show you one lap and then I will talk you through every turn 
and what my plan, what my decision process there is. Um, little disclaimer, the lab is recorded on a stock S1000 RR from BMW. The lines that a bike takes are dependent on the bike as well and riding style. So for a leader bike, lines might be a little bit different than when you're on a 400 or 600 bike. And then also there are uh, personal uh, preferences on how to take things. So don't take my word as the only way to do it. There's many ways to get around a uh, racetrack and that's one of the beautiful things. There's always something to change, something to learn. And right, if you have uh, advice, please comment below. I'm always super eager and open to learn more. Um, and just wanted to show you what I'm doing right now to get a fast under two minute lap together. Yeah. Welcome back. All right. So this is the video. Uh, like I said, link is in the description below. Just like a quick overview, right? Down here we have the lap times of the current lap and the previous ones, best laps. And the cockpit of the S1000 is also pretty interesting. You can learn quite a few things from there. That's why I have the camera so you record that as well. Um, the big circle in the center is uh, RPMs of the engine. Uh, that is really important because it gives you an idea of if you're accelerating, decelerating, and also uh, when to shift gears, <coughs> up and down that is. Uh, here's the gear indicator, we're in third gear right now. Uh, miles per hour is up here. Uh, DDC is the traction control, how much intervention is there from the computer. And then there's a brake indicator, which doesn't show you exactly like how much brake lever I use. Um, and also it's a little bit delayed, like from actually grabbing the brake until it's like on a display, there's maybe half a second delay until the computer actually registers that uh, you are braking and slowing down the bike. All right, as promised, let's have a look at one quick lap and then I will walk you through the entire thing turn by turn. So this was a 157 lap, the next one will be a couple of tens slower, 158, but there's less traffic, that's why I want you to see that lap. Here's this turn two, going wide, bringing it back in, going up the hill, braking, turning in. Exit, switch over, up the hill, full gas, full gas, brake, left, <clears throat> downhill, gas, 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 leaning over, looking, rolling on the gas, and exit. That was Alexa. Turn seven, <clears throat> going uphill, brake, 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 turning in, on the gas, short shift, down the hill, start braking, <clears throat> down shift, tight turn, brake, go slow into here, <clears throat> little traffic. Now we're on the back straight. Brake, brake, brake. Two gears down. There I'm a little bit wider than I wanted. So not a perfect lap, sorry. Go hard on the gas. And you're on the main straight again. And one lap is done. Now actually let's go into turn by turn and what my plan for the lap is, and we'll see. <laughs> let's have a look. Okay, let's start. We are on the main straight of Thunder Hill. We will talk about the straight really later, but the main thing is, of course, keep fully tucked. Um, that means that like, your chin should be on the tank. You wanna make yourself as small as possible, and a lot of people forget about that, that the aerodynamics will make a difference. So your helmet should be on the tank. If you don't feel it, you can go lower, make yourself smaller. That will aid your top speed and on such a long straight that will save you a couple of tenths, maybe even a second. So general approach, main straight, get everything out of your bike, go as fast as you can. I will talk about the braking marker soon. 
What I do is I drift all the way over because for turn one I want to be as wide as possible to take the turn as fast as I can. Uh, and the wider you're out, uh, the more the turn opens up. <clears throat> so we go our way up, we're still accelerating right now. Accelerating. So we're doing 160 miles an hour right now, fifth gear, and we're past the tower. My braking marker is here, where the wall ends. Like I said, if you ride on a different bike, these references will be all different, but just for my personal style, I start braking here. Keep in mind, at 160 miles an hour, you're moving a lot of meters per second. And so if you actually start about thinking to brake, right, like rolling off, grabbing the brake, how long does that actually take? If, you're, if that takes one second or two seconds until you actually start really braking, then you're moving a lot of time without actually braking. So you want to really train how quickly can you roll off and grab the brake, roll off and grab the brake. If you can do this move quicker, you will save plenty of time. That means you are longer on the brakes and you can uh, have a longer, more stable braking period rather than running out of time and having to brake too hard and upsetting the chassis. So, braking marker here and then I'm full on the brakes going down two gears and drifting all the way out to the right. A lot of people just stay here and go straight, go all the way to the right. Going all the way over, braking, braking, two gears down. I'm looking for this cone. This is my turn and marker. Doesn't mean that I'm starting turning in there. You see the bike is already turned a little bit, 20 degree. But I'm looking at this until roughly this moment. And then I shift my gaze into the corner because I'm looking now for my next reference. I'm looking for my apex. So I'm getting pretty close to this. And that's my orientation. When you brake, you look at it, brake, 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 and then you shift your focus to the apex you want to hit. So I'm two gears down. Now that I start leaning the bike more over, I ease off the brake and really focus on getting this turn as tight as possible. This is a very fast turn. You can take it at 100 miles an hour plus at the min speed. Uh, min speed is the minimum speed that you have in the turn, which is often but not always close to the apex. So we're still slowing down a little bit, but I'm easing off the brake as I lean over the bike. So yeah, very important turn because you're carrying a lot of speed and you want to get as much speed as possible through that turn. Because after that it's a little mini straight and in straights, but you can always gain a lot of time. So we're off throttle. You can see there's the indicated brake uh, full on. That's not completely true. At this time I'm already off the brake. And you will see the computer catches up in just half a second after this. Um, I'm aiming for the cone. This is your apex and you want to get the bike as close as possible. Uh, I don't like to run over the curb with my bike. The goal is to bring your body over the curb. So in a perfect world your tire goes exactly here around the white line and everything your body and bike is inside of it. Sometimes you hit the cone. That could happen if you're really overdoing it. Uh, which won't be a problem, but you really want to get really tight on this turn and as soon as you see your exit you roll on the gas. So we passed it and you can see the brake caught up. We're still doing 100 miles an hour, so this is a fast turn and you're actually going uphill. If you're riding this, it looks flat, but it actually goes up quite a bit. If you walk the track or skateboard it, you can really notice this is quite a bit up. So you can go early onto the throttle or you should go early on the throttle because you will lose speed if you, you hesitate. So first crack it open a little bit, make sure that you don't run wide and once you know you have all the room, really crack open the throttle, get the bike up straight and go hard on the throttle. Hard on the throttle. It was just a shorter burst, sometimes I go a little bit longer, this one's a little bit short. Um, you could keep it a little bit longer open and then just be a little bit hard on the brakes. This turn now is slightly downhill, uh, not so much that it's a problem, uh, but one of the hard parts about this turn is uh, turn two that's coming up. There are no real reference markers. Yes, there's a little cone here that you will see once we get a little bit closer, but for braking markers there's not much there. It's just like grass, burnt grass on both sides. So people can easily get visual panic here. My approach to this turn is uh, the following. I will brake and shift down when I get close to this point. So let me rephrase that. I will brake and downshift 
before I get to this point and then I make this really long turn into a V, right? In a V. So there's two very good ways to get through this uh, turn two. Either you just lock your bike in, you go in one long radius through it, which is easy, but then you will be coasting a long time where you have your braking done, you have your constant radius, you go around and around it, and then you wait on the exit and you exit uh, with gas out. Uh, a little bit faster way is you brake on your way into it, which makes you run a little bit wide. And then once you're uh, done with the braking, you tighten up your turn and aim for the exit. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. That approach is great because you're a little bit longer on the brakes and you're coasting less. Uh, when I changed it, it saved me three seconds per lap. So let's have a look at that. So I'm braking. <clears throat> you only need light brakes here. It's not a heavy braking zone <clears throat> because the speed that you can carry through it and my bike indicates around 85, 86 miles an hour easy. So we're still slowing down a little bit. See 86 and we're now carrying a little bit, uh, we're running a little bit wide on purpose and then after that we bring it back in. There is another cone, that is your exit cone and you will see you get close to that so you can drive hard out of it. Running wide, bring it in, that's a cone. So you can get really close to this one and that offers you then to really drive straight out of it. So once you get close to this cone, you open the throttle, uh, just a crack uh, and then roll it open. It squishes the rear tire and suspension together, which gives you more traction. And then you can really open it uh, faster after you put load onto the tire. Full gas, very short burst. Um, and now we are already preparing for turn three. You need to move your body to the side, right? You were doing a left turn, now a right turn is coming up, so move your bum over. And this is going uphill, right? You can see that you cannot see very far. So this is uphill. I am staying in second gear here and I use the braking until the top of the crest. Um, this turn, turn three, is very tricky. <clears throat> And a lot of people crash there, especially early in the mornings. So this is the first right turn in a while. Um, that means the right side are la la la, need more beer. That means the right side of your tire is cold. Turn falls off to the side, that means there is less traction available. So cold tire and a turn that's not helping you out. So not a good turn to carry your brakes into because you don't want to overstress the tire. Another thing, line-wise, there's two good lines to there that I'm aware of. One is you stay very tight here to the right, which like we drive hard, you go all the way over, which is a racing line for most AFM racers, or you stay in the middle and then bring it back in. Uh, the advantage of the middle approach is here close to the right side, there's a couple of ripple bumps and they can really upset your bike. The tarmac on the left side is a little bit smoother, but then you have to bring it in and it will be a little bit harder uh, and you leave the door open for other people to go past you. I get my braking done here and then if you go over the bumps, which I do in this example, you have to be really light onto, on the front so you don't uh, upset the bike. If you're braking and you have stiff arms, you will really feel the bumps and the bike will be making all sorts of shapes and then when you tip it over, you might crash. So don't do that. Bumps, bumps, bumps. Now leaning more, going around. And you want to stay right. Try to really, the curb starts there. Try to get the bike really close uh, over there. You just have uh, close or maintenance throttle. Um, and I really want to get it over. The reason uh, that I'm in second gear here is that I can get good drive out of this transition. So you're leaned over, you're looking towards the, the apex there and get the bike all the way as hard as you can over to the right. You see I get super close, my body is over the curb. The curb is very rough here, so I don't like to touch my knee down there. Um, it just doesn't feel good, it's very rough, it might rip off one of your knee sliders. Uh, ask me how I know. The important thing here is if you stay right, you can give it a little bit of gas that will then carry you to the middle of the track and then you have instantly flip it over. At the speed that we're doing right now, there's no real straight part and it's actually quite fun. 
So you're all the way leaned over and you have to jump right away to get the bike to the other direction. Let's, let's see how I do this. So you see I go until this exit cone and this is where, let me just like back up like a millisecond. Bop, 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 bop. Staying right, staying right, staying right, staying right. That cone, I'm all the way to the right. And now I give it some gas, I jump over the bike, uh, I will explain it in a second, and turn the bike to the left so I can get the bike turned, which takes roughly a second. And by the, bike, by the time the bike is turned, we're already roughly here, in the middle of the track and very close to the turn. And then we just keep leaning the bike over to the left. When it's a quick transition like this, you really need to use your entire, you really need to use your entire body to turn the bike quickly. One technique that really helps me here, and again, everybody, every's body is different and every's riding style is different. What I do is, right, like I'm right now doing a right turn. My left knee is in the tank. I have my body position like this and I'm looking there. And now I know it's time to jump over the bike. So what I do is uh, the California Superbike School calls it knee to knee. So with this knee, you push your bum over that you are right left as she comes off the seat and then this knee uh, on the right side gets into the tank and you move your head over the handlebars right here are the handlebars so you move from here to there but then what really helps me is if you really use these muscles to muscle the bike over you push into the tank you hang your body off and if you really press into that tank you can feel the bike moving quicker. It's, it's a really nice feeling when you get it right and just like moving the bike over like that um, in this kind of quick chicane change of uh, direction really helps you to turn it quicker. All right, so jumping over the bike, using the knee to turn it over. So we did the change, right? We really from 50 degree on one side to 50 degree on the other side. Here's a cone, that is your next apex. You keep the bike to the left, get really close to the curb. Again, this is a very rough curb, don't get the tires on it. Um, and you wanna stay tight until you can see the exit. You can get a very straight line up the hill um, for the cyclone, so you can really go hard on the gas and uh, drive up there. Go on the gas, go up, go up, go up. And now this is a really big hill and it's very steep and very sudden. If you walk it, you can really appreciate how big it is. So going up here like this has some problems and some advantages. The problem is you don't see anything. This is a very common spot where people run off because you don't see where you're going, you have visual panic and you run off. I will walk you exactly through what I do so I don't run off there. Um, but it's also a really big advantage. It's a hill. So if you go uphill, it will make you stop a lot faster because gravity is pulling you down. That means going uphill will slow you down a lot quicker. There's this line here. This is my braking marker. So when the hill really goes up, that's where I start braking. You don't have a lot of time, so you need to brake really hard in a straight line while you stay as right as possible, right? like almost staying uh, at the dirt, and you brake super hard but you already are ready for the turn because the turn comes up so quickly on you and it's a very quick turn. It's like not a long radius. You just like turn and you have to be done with it. You have to prepare your body first. So while you're braking, get your body into the right position that you're off with one butt cheek, you're off to the side and you're looking towards the apex and then do a really rapid turn. So let's have a look. So you see like first you look at this cone while you're braking. And then once you get very close, you change your view to the apex. You see very little of it, but you really want to aim for it, right? Like try to mentally run over the curb. You, you're never going to do that, but your body has to be over the curb so you can carry as much speed as you can through this very tight turn. Again, don't overdo it. You cannot save a lot of time in this turn. The big thing is just break leg up the hill, make a clean turn, <clears throat> and then you go down so you have a little bit of a breather. I always like this moment to recheck, recalibrate, uh, take a breather uh, because the next section is really important after this. So this is a little bit of a 
a stop gap. You are going very slow, one of the slowest turn on uh, the track. And after that, you have a very, very freaking fast uh, section that is very, very fun. So, little brakes. So, going off the brakes here. Blech. So, close up. This is what you're aiming for, right? Your knee can touch this one. It's just a very short tap. Um, but your tires want to be here, super close to it, so you can carry speed through there. Uh, I'm in second gear. Uh, I didn't shift at all. Yeah, let's do it. So you see you're almost instantly on the other side of the track and now you're facing downhill. <clears throat> you move your body over again and uh, you can notice like since the left turn in turn four, you didn't need to move your body. So now it's the first time that you move your body to the right again. You go downhill, you're in second gear. The RPMs are pretty low, but because you're going downhill, you're picking up speed nicely. Make the downhill a quick straight where you can go hard on the gas because your bike is completely straight. So when you're straight, you can go as hard on the gas as you want. Um, you won't crash. The only thing might be you wheelie, but downhill wheeling also takes a lot and the RPMs are so low, so you won't wheelie anyway. So just give it a quick splash of gas, go down the hill and then really prepare for this long turn, which is a lot of fun. So we lean now over the bike, it was a very, very short uh, straight. It was just like a mini straight. And now that you position your body, I first go a little bit wide and then roll on the gas while I keep the lean angle of the bike. So you, know, you can see the RPMs climb, 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 climb. So what I'm doing there is I'm really, really far over, right? Like go as far as you can, like have a straight left arm, um, be really far off the bike because the more you hang over, the less the bike has to lean over. And that means you can put more pressure into the rear tire. Um, the reason again is that right, you open the throttle and then roll it on. So you load the tire, you load the suspension, and if everything feels good and solid, you can go to full st throttle uh, while you're being leaned over. Traction control will intervene uh, to some bit, but if you give it time and you roll it on, it will figure it out. Up to the point where if you, uh, allow, this, uh, if you allow the traction control in a low enough setting to have some slip, the rear tire will spin quicker than the front tire, so this is not sliding yet. But if you roll on the gas in a, a long turn like that and you open it pretty far, the rear tire will move faster than the front tire and that makes the bike step out a little bit. It's not sliding technically yet because both tires have a good grip, but because the rear tire is moving quicker, it will feel like somebody is shoving your butt a little bit. It's a really, really nice feeling. That means also you're on the edge. If you push a little bit further, you will crash and uh, lose the rear. But that turns the bike quicker and it's really, really cool because the rear is moving ever so slightly quicker. <clears throat> and that helps you to exit better. That will help you to exit on the right side. I like to be on the right side. Some people drive directly into the middle um, because that just helps me to just keep giving it full gas. Uh, full throttle and then without brakes to go into uh, the next turn, turn six. So gas, have the bike straight up and then use a little bit of engine braking. And now you look for your next apex. There's a cone here, there's your next apex. So get the bike really nice and close, right? Like try to get your bike and body, not a tire, over the curb. So you have a really nice turn because this turn is so important. It will set you up for the next couple of high speed turns and you want to get a clean exit. If you don't get a clean exit out of this, the next three turns will suffer and you will lose seconds. So go really tight on this. It's one of the turns that go a little bit slower in it if you have to, but the exit is so important. So. I could even go a little bit tighter. It's not as tight as I want, uh, so I can improve on that. And then you roll on the gas and I shift uh, one the bike, once the bike is up straight into third, and then you keep the throttle pinned. So try to go to full throttle as quickly as possible. Full throttle, up shift, hold the throttle, lean the bike, hold the throttle, 
So you've seen that was still a little blip. That means I was not at 100% throttle. So I was probably like at 80 and then gave it a little bit more. And that way you can throttle steer, right? Like if you think um, you're running a little bit wide, you can uh, play with the throttle very smoothly without upsetting the chassis. Uh, how far you're running. But if you know you have room, like here I have a lot of room, so you just give it full throttle, right? A little whack to just get a little bit more speed. So essentially what I'm saying is the uh, last turn, uh, turn seven, is flat out. Uh, it's a very, very fast turn. Is it scary? Yeah, of course it's scary. Right? Like going flat out at over 110, 15 miles an hour through a turn, it's very, very scary. But you get used to it, uh, work up to it, and once the bike feels good and you feel good, you can definitely do that. This next turn, this turn I take without brakes. Just line up, go really far to the right, look here for your turn and marker, and then turn quickly, be really, really good in your body position, and go close to the apex without brakes. AKA carrying a lot of speed through there. So we're going very far and now I'm aiming here, there's another cone where this rider is right now and trying to get really close, uh, having the body over the curb um, and carrying a lot of speed through there. Still in third gear, nothing changed. So you can see like the body head is over it, it's really cool when the cone is just like flying by your head, so it's a fun feeling because you're really feeling locked in, uh, fighter pilot style. Ah! It's awesome. So here, when you get really close, you can get very early on the gas again. And this next section is interesting because it goes uphill. So you really need a lot of gas. So once you know you're not running wide, full throttle. Full throttle, full throttle, full throttle. And so here's a couple of lines. There's like one line here. And if you look at the video in the description below, you'll see it in higher quality. You can use some of the lines. I actually use always like some skid marks from cars and so on as a brake marker. So every time I go to Thunder Hill, my brake marker is ever so slightly different. But you can see this is a straight, so you want to carry a lot of speed. And it's also a very steep uphill section. Again, just like in a cyclone, brake later than you think because it will slow you down. And this turn also has a lot of banking. There are some bumps at the apex. So you need to be really loose on the bike, on the handlebar especially. Um, and I don't carry the brakes until the apex. So I do straight line braking, a little bit of braking while I tip in the bike, and then I go off the brakes slowly, uh, and then over the bumps, and then it carries you up, and the uphill with the massive banking really slows you down. Oh, and of course I shift down one gear. Always shift down early because that will slow down your bike. And, and if you do it early, uh, the bike has more, the suspension has more time to, to stabilize again and be steady. You don't want to have the suspension working up and down when you turn in the bike. So get the shifting out of the way early. So downshift, brake, ease off the brakes and then full lean angle. Brake, 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 ease off. We really lose, go over the bumps, bum, 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 but very close again to the apex. And then this is a little bit freaky because you again don't see where you're going. So some people look for towers in the distance. Um, I just go to the middle of the track. If you're in the middle of the track, you don't run off and it works every time. So aim for the middle of it to position your bike. Go onto the gas and short shift because you're going downhill. So there's a lot of uh, risk for a big wheelie and the wheelie will kill your drive. So short shift and then go right on full throttle that should keep your front tire planted uh, and give you good drive. Another thing here is uh, body position wise, right? So you just did a left turn. So if this is my bike, right, I'm uh, all to the left, left butt is off, I'm looking through and now it's, it's a slight right turn. So you could move your body over, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> boop, right? But that's a lot of time and that will uh, upset your suspension. So as this is not a really uh, big right turn. I stay on the left side, even though it's a right turn. So I don't move at all. You just move the head over the handlebars into the center of the bike. And that way you don't upset the suspension and you can really drive hard uh, over the hill. Um, your head is very far forward. It reduces really tendency as well. 
and you can drive harder without moving. So don't move your body. The, the next turn is a left turn anyway. So you can save energy and you don't upset the bike. So by not moving the, uh, the bum, but just moving the head into the front and center of the bike, you will make the bike feel better, more planted, and you can drive much harder through there. And you will see we'll catch up to his rider because he's not doing that. So middle of the track, just move your head over the handlebars and then short shift with full throttle. See, even though I'm doing a right turn, I'm still on the left side of the bike with my bum and I'm not changing that. Um, one thing is here, if you're too far to the right, the road, the track does a, a little kink here. Some people end up going through the dirt. The dirt is pretty safe there. If you run off, just don't use the brakes, run through it, you will be safe, it's all okay. But that's why you want to be in the middle of the track, so you can see now where you're going. And you can see right second gear, I'm upshifting right now. And then you just stay there, tuck behind the fairing. This is a sort of a straight with a little kink. So full throttle, upshift and go down. You see third, full, 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 full. This service road that goes to Thunder Hill West is a great uh, braking marker. Some people will start braking here. And then there are some tar lines like this one after that. I usually start braking uh, between the first and second tar line that is coming up here. Um, for this turn, uh, you can see it first goes uh, up a little bit, but it actually goes down into a bowl. So this turn has a lot of banking and it's again a turn where you can go in much faster than you think. So late braking, uh, there's no big bump, so you can trail it pretty deep into the turn. Downshift early, so you don't upset the suspension. Um, and now I have a rider here, so I cannot go the ideal line. Usually you go all the way over to the right. Uh, we're gonna overtake this one on the left. So you see like these are the lines. So now, even though this isn't indicated yet, I'm on full brakes and downshifting. And we're gonna pass this rider on the left. Now here is another cone. That is a great turn and marker again. You brake in a straight line looking for that one. <clears throat> Once you get close, you would ease off the brakes and then look for another cone here at the apex. I'm now a little bit more in the middle of the road, not a problem. So you just need to brake a little bit longer and then take a very tight turn so we don't get into the way of the other rider. And you see like my body is all over the curb here. Um, Lots of lean angle, right, because we have additional banking. It's like 56 uh, degree lean angle already. Uh, maybe I go even a little bit higher towards the apex. Yeah, 59 degrees. So high lean angle turn. <clears throat> and now in this, still you can really see how much banking there is. Walking this part of the track is awesome. It's like this really curved bowl and you have so much traction in there, right? So we are 70 miles an hour min speed and lots of lean angle, so you really get over there and get the bike through it. One of my favorite turns to do overtakes, a lot of fun, really, really good turn. Then here, you have a very, very short straight, right? So go all the way over, give it a quick burst of gas, and then right onto the brakes. And this one again goes a little bit uphill and is one of the slowest turns of the track. But let's talk about it in a second. Little gas, you saw one coin, <laughs> coin, you saw one cone just there, <clears throat> that's a good braking marker, so start braking at that one. Look at your turn in marker here, next cone. So once you get close to it, you would do the turn in. <clears throat> Almost forgot. Hope you're still drinking as well, cheers. So on the brakes, I'm staying in second gear here. <clears throat> the approach for this turn is <clears throat> rather go slower through this turn um, because there's not a lot of time to be gained in this turn. But what you want to have is a really good line out of it. Now there's a rider that will complicate things a little bit <clears throat> because I cannot take my ideal line and I will lose a couple of tens because of that. Um, but this is not a turn that you need to carry speed through. Go slow in, have a good line out of it because you want to have a good setup for the back straight and that's where you save a lot of lap time. So braking and then leaning in. 
There are some uh, patches and tar snakes there that are slippery when it's hot. I had already once both tires sliding a little bit there, but Pirelli slicks are good tires and they regained uh, traction. So if you, if you keep very close to the apex, the tarmac is great there. If you run a little bit wide, watch out for, for the uh, tar snakes. But there's again banking to this turn, so it's a really fun turn as well. So braking, leaning in, and now when you see how I lean over the bike, I get really, really, really tight. My like, bike tires are just outside of the white line. Um, and then this is a turn where you stay a little bit longer to the left, so you get an easier exit. So again, we sacrifice a little bit of speed here to get more speed onto the back straight. You'll see in a second. We have to get around this rider, so we'll do it on the outside. So usually here, um, this is all paved, uh, even though it's painted, but you can easily go over it. And then here's like a little bit of rumble strip at the white line. Uh, some people cut all the way over and go through here, which is not, uh, that's out of bounds. So the lap time should not really count. And for AFM races, there are hay bells, so you cannot go over there. You can over go over this first part. Um, what I like to do is this little part where the lines meet, that's where I look at. So you look at here and aim for that. So usually I would cross through here just over the, the smooth stuff so I don't upset the bike because if you go over the rumble stuff your bike moves around and you cannot use as much power. So I stay over the smooth part, look here and then I would flip over the bike onto the, main, uh, onto the back straight. Here we have the rider so we go around here but still you look at this area and then you flip over. So you get the bike close to here and what I do here is you go on the gas, uh, while I'm turning I'm shifting into third so that the shifting is done early and then once I'm uh, past the turn I am on full throttle and the shifting doesn't upset the bike. So that's why I short shift uh, in this moment. So you would see short shift, go wide and go as quickly as you can onto full throttle. Full throttle, third gear, fourth gear. <clears throat> and my braking marker is just before um, the bridge. And also I'm going all the way over to the left to set up for the last couple of turns. So again, this is a very high speed where we're doing almost 140 miles an hour. So how quickly you can actually change from full throttle to brake will save you a couple of tens. So quickly transition to the brakes. And then I go down two gears, go quickly down, so you use the engine braking to the maximum and the suspension has time to stabilize. So you're hard on the brakes, you're drifting all the way over to the left to set up for the last two turns. Down, down, and here's a couple of uh, cones. If you have uh, smaller capacity bikes, you can use them, of course, for braking markers. But on a leader bike, I feel like you have to start braking at the bridge. I'm looking for this cone, it's very small here, but you can see it in the high-res version on, on your computer. So that's my turn-in marker. I go, I'm still on the brakes pretty hard. Uh, and now I'm starting to ease in the uh, bike lean angle-wise and easing off the brake. This is a turn that is again, don't worry about, uh, don't worry about carrying too much speed through it. The most important thing is that you get a good line into the next turn because that turn gets you into the front straight where you can save a lot of time. So slow in, fast out. So I'm getting it over here. You see there's a cone and I would really want to be even closer to that. So if you square it off more uh, than I did in this example, so you go a little bit more straight and then the steer harder, um, then you have a better change to square where it's squaring off the turn to hit that cone better, that apex. And then you get an even better drive than I get in this example onto, uh, into the last turn and then the front straight. So you're going around um, and you use all the track, you go all the way to the outside. There is first like a little painted curbing and then there are some rumble stuff, uh, rumble strip. And it's very, very grippy. So if you run over that, you have a couple of meters of extra space. 
uh, and use that because the further you are out the more speed you can go in so like i said this turner we just did we sacrificed it then here you can see this is almost a straight bike because um, the speed we carry uh, you never get the bike completely straight up it's always at a lean angle but this turner is done now and now we want to roll on the gas so we can carry already a lot of speed into the last turn and then get early onto the gas onto the front straight because the one that is at full throttle first will get the most out of the bike. So I'm going all where like the blue uh, painting curb ends over there and then I'm aiming for this cone to apex the last turn really tightly while rolling on the gas. So you have to figure out how much you can roll on the gas without running too wide. Because once you have to back off, you will ruin your drive. So you see I roll down a little bit. I'm having already 82 miles an hour close to that cone. And getting really close there. There's actually a little dip lately. I don't know if it's going to fix that for uh, 21 season. Um, but you want to be really smooth because it goes down. That's a good way to lose traction. So be really smooth there. Roll on the gas. And as you stand up the bike, add more gas to, so you can go to full throttle quickly. Also the hand position is important there, right? If you go into the turn like this and then you squeeze, you will see that like the last bit going to full throttle is really hard because like, uh, you need to crank it. So before the turn, move your hand up and then you can very controlled and in very normal range of motion for your wrist go to full throttle much easier. So first go up and then grab the throttle. So you see I'm at 91 miles an hour right now. I'm adding the RPMs and I'm going all the way outside. The curbing ends over here. That's usually when I want to change into third gear. And that's like where my, my goal is that I hit already 100 miles an hour there. Right? you can see you're just out of the turn and you're doing already 100 miles an hour. And from then on, the entire straight, you are keeping the throttle pinned and just going with a quick shifter through the gearbox. So third, fourth, fifth, 161 miles an hour, um, and then we are already at the tower. So the lap, will, the lap actually ends over here, so it's a little bit further. So we carry a lot of speed, and braking marker again is here at the end of the wall. And across the line, downshift, downshift, brake. And that is one lap around Thunder Hill East. So you see, that is a 158.0. So I lost a couple of tents here and there. Like I said, in a couple of turns there was traffic. In a couple of turns I could have had a tighter line. So I can even save a little bit. Uh, overall, not, not a bad lab uh, for, for my skill level. There's still a lot for me to learn. Um, the fastest lab that I've seen on a stock S1000 is the 154 from Michael Gilbert. Uh, he is a professional racer. Um, so there's still three seconds uh, for me to find as well. And I'm working towards that. Please let me know in the comments, like, was this useful? I hope you learned something uh, right about what gears uh, to use on, on a leader bike. Of course, gearing is different, um, but like, what you think about uh, the turns, uh, when to do steering, uh, looking at brake, steering markers, uh, and also about exits, right? How you connect different turns, how Thunder Hill and other racetracks have different sections, and you really want to make sure. <sighs> you really want to make sure that the section works together really well and you use the flow of that section. That's one of the best parts about Thunder Hill. It's a very flowing racetrack and it's so fun if you can connect the turns and it all feels great. Yeah, and please let me know in, in the comment section below uh, what you think. Is there any tricks that you know? I hope that gives you an overview of how to get a lap under two minutes at Thunder Hill. I know I skipped a lot of things like detailed body position, throttle control, braking, this is not a video that I, uh, is uh, focusing on these techniques. So yeah, I hope this was helpful um, to see what goes through my head uh, around the lab of Thunder Hill East. A really fun track. I hope you're enjoying it as well. I hope you got something out of the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye bye.